Good morning. Let's see if this is actually working. Okay. Good morning, Sunnyvale. Welcome. We'll just get started in just a few moments. Hope everyone is doing well. Let everybody join in for a second. Hey, Ferris. Okay. Um, good morning, Sunnyvale. Welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. And welcome, of course, to the end of 2022. Um, this week's early art is actually from a mural from my holidays in Bend, Oregon. So I traveled last week through Bend, Oregon, and this was one of the many murals that they have there. Um, but, you know, always, always glad to kind of show off different artwork from around, from where I travel and, you know, uh, happy to see kind of the, the variety of that artwork. So it's actually really cool from that standpoint. But uh, thanks for everyone for, for being here. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to my standard background. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning. I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thank you for joining me again this week uh, for my weekly virtual office hours. This is the 145th version of this. Hope everyone is doing well, staying healthy, uh, staying dry. You know, we have uh, kind of a continual storm this week. Uh, we've now reached 1,019 days since the start, since March, the March the March 16th, 2020 County Health Order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. You know, almost three years ago, I converted my weekly coffee shop office hours into this weekly live stream address and haven't missed a week since, um, other than a short, a short stint for my surgery uh, last month. But people still say they appreciate hearing from their mayor each week, whether or not they're watching this live or video delayed by days or sometimes weeks. But these weekly addresses allow me to reach a lot more people than my in-person office hours. You know, they allow me to provide you some updates, answer some of your questions, give you some words of encouragement. Um, so thank you for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale however I could. You know, most Fridays, like today, I follow up this live stream address with in-person uh, meetings at my office hours, my virtual, my my in-person office hours at being seen on Murphy Avenue. I've been doing that for over six years now. So if you'd like to reserve 15 minutes or 30 minutes, um, uh, a 15 minute or 30 minute time slot, all you need to do is go ahead and email me and we can figure out the best time for that. Uh, so um, it's been it's always a great way to to meet with people. Um, I intermittently change my background art with art provided by Sunnyvale artists, uh, mainly from the Sunnyvale Art Club. Today's piece was provided uh, by um, Natalia Shevchenko, and I thought it was a good holiday piece. Uh, you know, with the with the rain and kind of the snow that a lot of us are are um, seeing around the around the world, around the nation, um, here in the Bay Area, of course. And so I thought it was actually a a nice piece. 
a little reflective with the glass, but but uh, I thought it was uh, perfect for what we're seeing today. So if you're interested in purchasing this piece or getting in contact with the artist, please reach out to me and I'll put you in contact with that artist. Um, <clears throat> uh, before I get to my standard weekly update, you know, it's the end of the year and I thought it would take a few moments to take stock on 2022 and I'll probably do a little more next week, but you know, as I look back on 2022, it's it's been another tough year. Uh, definitely COVID, um, the challenge of COVID has still been there. And, and there's been lots of challenges throughout the year. You know, COVID, I think, is the biggest one. Uh, you know, continuing to having to mask and the questions of vaccines and boosters. And, you know, of course, now it's flu season and RS, R, RSV, you know, um, all those all, all the kind of the health issues that uh, have kept people from, from uh, meeting up. I think that's one of the biggest issues as far as the year, you know, continuing to deal with that on ongoing challenge, you know, from, from other challenges, of course, the crows, you know, that was an interesting thing at the beginning of the year that, that, you know, it's only been the beginning of last year or beginning of 2022, where we uh, started trying the the green laser pointer downtown, and it did have a certain amount of success. Uh, the crows are back, and actually, um, from from that standpoint, you know, city staff is back using the green laser point to kind of harass them away from from flocking too much downtown. Uh, but that that ended up being a national news story or an international news story. Uh, it was in the Guardian. It was in the New York Times. Uh, it was a it was an interesting thing. You know, it's like it's it was the um, conjunction of tech a tech story and an animal story here in Silicon Valley. And of course, it wasn't politics. It wasn't COVID based. So from that standpoint, a lot of people were looking for any positive news, any other news that that people, you know, didn't want to see on a on a um, in their news feed. So I think it was good from that standpoint. You know, personally, I had shoulder surgery um, last month and, you know, still recovering from that. Uh, hopefully that'll go better. But, you know, there's been lots of great successes for the city. You know, we op reopened the, the renovated Fair Oaks Park with the whole Magical Bridge Playground, which I just hear positive things from all the people who visit that, you know. And then uh, we opened up Muwekma Park, a brand new park at the old AMD campus near Lawrence and, and Duane. And that was a new six and a half acre park uh, right next to San Miguel, uh, the San Miguel neighborhood, which didn't really have a park. You know, their, local, their closest park was Fair Oaks. And so, you know, that was part of our long term vision to try to get more parks in the city and happy that the city was able to do that. You know, um, we got several awards this this year. You know, we've already got an award for our new net zero lead platinum city hall, even though it's not opening until uh, spring of next year, uh, most likely March. And then we'll have our grand opening sometime in spring. Uh, but, you know, we received uh, we're the number four safest city in the nation. Um, and that we always seem to be in about the top 10 as far as that's concerned. And then two, two weeks ago, of course, we were rated the happiest city in the nation. So, you know, it's it's good to see those, you know, those successes from a city standpoint. You know, we have a very well-run city and it's a very safe city. And, and all that, um, I think, makes the residents happy, you know, make sure that, you know, they're everything, you know, most things, there are problems, there are always challenges, but things... Uh, are generally uh, in a good state as far as our city is concerned. We're not in the red. We didn't have to lay off people during COVID. You know, there are lots of positive things that the city's done, you know, during COVID that, that a lot of cities that were, weren't in the best place um, had to do. Um, and then, you know, personally, I was chosen as a Bloomberg Harvard mayor uh, earlier this year. And that was um, basically a great honor to my standpoint. You know, it was Bloomberg uh, chose 40 mayors from around the world. Uh, and, you know, so it was uh, 28 from the U.S. and 12 international. And, you know, for, for me, it, it put uh, what the city is doing in perspective. You know, uh, for me, 
the challenges we face. We have challenges, but they're not as big as some of the of the other cities, which are seeing, you know, gun violence on a nightly basis, people getting killed or, you know, um, I was talking to the mayor of Sarajevo and and she had garbage piled 10 to 15 feet tall in their streets. And she's on the phone with the, the prime minister trying to get more money because all their garbage workers were quitting and, you know, moving to Central Europe because they could get 10 times their salary. So, so you know, in general, our garbage is picked up. The roads are, are you know, in generally good condition. Uh, the city is relatively safe. Uh, all those in and we have a very relatively happy group of residents you know we have a very diverse city and all that adds to you know being a, a very well run and a very good city uh, very happy residents so you know it's it's great to have those residents that are that are you know proud of our city and you know i'm proud to have a well run city as mayor so so all that you know taking stock i think uh, that was one of the best things of going through bloomberg harvard and, and there's other opportunities that that has now opened up from a city standpoint you know we're we've kicked off a program and you'll be hearing more about that in the new year as far as how we should better utilize recycled water uh, but lots of executive training lots of training for our staff uh, so I think you know it's been it's been a fantastic year as far as that's concerned uh, and things are you know things are starting to open up you know we finally had our first in-person council meeting uh, beginning of December and now you know we're we're relatively back in person and, and taking the best of COVID taking that remote capability so that residents don't need to be at the council chambers but can be there and you know on zoom and giving public comment either on their phone or or on this on zoom uh and maintaining that the best hybrid uh concepts as far as making sure that meetings um, are available to residents as well as city staff so they don't have to sit through an entire meeting if their item comes you know up on the agenda at 10 or 11 o'clock at night so so lots of positive things to take away um but happy to be you know mayor of of a great city so uh thank you that was a quick a quick aside i might bring up some other things next week but uh let's let's talk about um let's go ahead and get started and talk about what's happened at the federal state county and city level over the last two weeks you know the last two weeks have been relatively slow because the holidays um early last wednesday morning of course a 6.4 magnitude earthquake shook northern california and that was near eureka humboldt area uh, two people died, you know, thousands were without power, and, you know, it was actually suggested that people had to boil their water, so it's really a big reminder that we all need to be prepared for that next disaster, you know, um, I, I, always, you know, talk about how our great um, serve team, you know, Sunnyvale CERT team is, um, but, uh, there's two classes coming up or several classes coming up. There's a two and a half hour personal emergency preparedness class. Um, and there's one in English and one in Spanish. The next one in English is on January 8th. Uh, the next one in Spanish is on January 28th. Um, and then, so these, this is a two and a half hour class to basically get your home prepared, your family prepared for that next disaster, making sure you have enough water, enough food, enough, you know, what enough planning to make sure that you're ready for whatever that disaster might be. And then there's an eight, eight week, one night a week course, and that's the, the community emergency response team. So that's the CERT class. That's a basic training class. And that starts in March. I went through that about you know, seven years now, seven years ago now, and I go back and help out. I volunteer. I'm sometimes a walking wounded um, during their final during their final training exercise. They actually have you know volunteers come in and you know, basically um, pretend to be victims uh, during the during the uh, whatever the disaster is, and so I I attend and you know, uh, try to try to do that whenever I can. And it's so it's a great, it's a great group of volunteers. It's all done through Department of Public Safety. And, you know, when that next emergency happens, you know, we won't have enough staff, no city will have enough staff at on duty at any given time to deal with all the all the issues around the city. And so this allows neighborhoods to be better prepared to have neighborhood leaders to 
uh, go through and deal with whatever the local problems are, and then report into uh, public safety as they're as they're dealing with that emergency. So, um, if you haven't went through it, uh, definitely consider it. You know, it's a it's a great course. You get to learn a lot of you know see some of the behind operations of the fire fire station, but but also you know better most importantly you get to meet a group. Uh, a, a team um, of volunteers that are fantastic, as well as, you know, I think that every class, you end up making a few friends from that class because you went through this, this experience together. So definitely consider uh, the CERT. I, I posted about it last week, and definitely it's, it's very worthwhile. Uh, last Thursday, uh, Congress passed the 4,000-page, $1.7 trillion dollar uh, omnibus spending bill so that's that will fund the government through September of 2023 and you know uh, Congress passed that budget um last week but then it had to kind of go through a complicated enrollment process so that basically um talks about printing every page of the bill on parchment paper with a certification page that then needs to be signed by the Speaker of the House and the President pro, pro Tem of the Senate. Um, and then it actually has to be signed by President Biden. So the bill was actually flown to President Biden, who I think is vacationing in St. Croix for his signature. And, and Biden had, had until today to sign the bill so that there wouldn't be a government shutdown. I think he signed it actually yesterday. So uh, that, you know, that was good that, you know, our government is federal government is funded, but two important parts of the bill for Sunnyvale at least are, you know, um, some funding that uh, Congress member Con Kana had to receive for a district. So, you know, he, he um, there are community project funds now. So these were, I think, what we'll call old earmarked funds, but these are community project funding. Uh, and the, and uh, Congressman Khanna got $24 million. Uh, but two of those projects for Sunnyvale are $3 million for the Stevens Creek Trail extension. Uh, so that that's um, to fund our portion, you know, so Mountain View is doing the portion from where it ends now, Dale Heatherstone to Remington, and Sunnyvale is doing Remington to Fremont Avenue. And so uh, that, you know, that $3 million helps to finalize that final design and start that construction of uh, ultimately Stevens Creek Trail for our portion. Um, and then, uh, so that was $3 million, and then Congressman Khanna also got $1.5 million to expand Sunnyvale Community Services' new roof um, and solar energy system. So, so ultimately, you know, Sunnyvale Community Services does a fantastic job in our community, you know, helping low-income residents with food, with rent, you know, with other services. And so this will basically, you know, uh, they moved into a new building last year, I think it was now, uh, with the help of, of, of the city, as well as other funding um, elements from, from lots of con contributors, lots of donations. But uh, this project actually ensures that that roof will be sound for years to come. And then, of course, you know, uh, from an environmental standpoint, uh, providing power, so adding rooftop solar. So I think all those are positive. Um, Let's see, uh, two, uh, and Sunnyvale's been in the news for lots of things over the last two weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, of, of course, Smart Asset declared Sunnyvale as the happiest city in the U.S. And so they analyzed um, the 200 largest cities in the United States, and they looked at a lot of different factors. Um, they looked at safety, they looked at income, education, marriage, and looking at all those factors, uh, Sunnyvale came up on top. So, you know, I always have some questions about um, the validity of statistics and all that, but in which, which things that they ultimately choose, but uh, happy that we were given that honor. Um, and then, of course, you know, secondly, Sunnyvale has been in the news a lot because of District 3 election. So if you go back to a few weeks ago um, when, you know, so 30 days after the election, uh, the, the county register finishes their count. And at that point, uh, it was a single vote win. And ultimately, uh, one of the candidates asked for a recount. And 
uh, that recount led to several, I think three vote, three ballots uh, being reopened or three ballots being opened that were uh, questionable about whether or not they had met the deadline. They were opened. And then um, after some legal de debate, um, the, it ended up in a tie. So two were for one candidate, one was for the other. So we ended up back at a tie. So so lots of news about, you know, in the Mercury News and other other um, other newspapers, other online reporting that that there's a tie now. And so the D3 election isn't complete and there will be a tiebreaker next Tuesday morning at 10.30 a.m. at the city chambers, at the council chambers in City Hall. It'll be in person and in Zoom, so if you want to attend, uh, you can you can attend or, or watch online, uh, depending upon what you want to do. And then um, earlier this week, or I think it was the end of last week, um, the federal government also changed the the immigration policy, or at least for those people coming from China, whether or not they're coming directly or indirectly, um, that they need to have a negative COVID test. So, so ultimately, uh, the day of, uh, within 24 hours of the flight to into the U.S., and there's been a large outbreak in of COVID in China right now. Uh, there's questions about what you know. Um, what variants that is, what that, what variants those are, and what their effects are within the U.S. Uh, but, but ultimately, from our standpoint, you know, it's it's a good, um, it's a good practice in general. That uh, ultimately, if you want to, um, and I think it's it's good if you want to, if you're visiting parties this weekend, you know, that's one of the other things that you can be doing is is definitely uh, consider getting a COVID test uh, prior to the party, uh, making sure that you're safe and hopefully other people to safe. I have several, you know, New, New Year's Eve parties that. That's one of the th things that people are asking. If you if you feel sick, if you have any symptoms, of course, don't go. But it's always it's just good practice to go ahead and and um, and test whenever you can. Um, so let's see. And then as far as um, let's see, let's go ahead and get to our weekly COVID numbers. Uh, the COVID numbers across the nation have have stabilized a, a little bit. You know. Um, uh, but hospitalizations have, you know, increased over over the last few weeks, and we'll see, you know, after after uh, all the holiday gatherings, whether or not it's Christmas, whether or not it's New Year's, um, you know, definitely we will see whether or not there'll be a big uptake. Definitely, we see we've already seen a trend downward, so it's been positive at least from you know a national and especially from a state and county standpoint. You know, from a national standpoint. We've now passed 100.6 million cases. That's up about 450,000 from last week. Uh, nationally, we've had 225 million, more than two-thirds of the population that are fully vaccinated, and 49% have received a booster. More than 84% of those five and older have at least had one dose. And you know, nationally, 78% of the adults are fully vaccinated. So, so it's actually been good from that standpoint. You know, as for deaths, we've had you know, 1,088,000 people pass away with COVID. Um, and that's another 2,000 in the last week. But that's, you know, trending downward a little bit. You know, as for California, we're seeing kind of an end to that surge. We've now had 10,888,000 positive cases. And we continue to see a slight decrease in the, in the average. So we're now at 60 800 new cases a day. Uh, that's down from 7,400 last week, 8,600 the week before. So, so definitely we're seeing a trend downward. We're still not where we were a few months ago, or, but you know, it's, it is looking a little bit better than we'd seen that uptick at the beginning, you know, if you, uh, within the last month. Uh, we're now at about a 10% average. Uh, on pos test case positivity over the last two over the last eight weeks, and we've had another 300 deaths, or right now um, over 97,000 people uh, in California that have passed away with with COVID. Uh, and then from a county standpoint, you know, for the county, we can, we now have passed you know a cumulative case count of about 461,000 um, cases. That's up about 2,000. Um, less than 2,000 in the last week, and we've had 2,548 deaths in the county. Uh, so actually no deaths 
from COVID just in the last week. Um, so I continue to spend a lot of time advocating on our city's behalf at the county level, um, you know, talking to county health, talking to our county supervisors. Uh, ultimately, as far as testing, you can go to secfreetest.org uh, to get, you know, get find out all the locations around around the county that you can get free testing. Uh, you can go to covidtests.gov to order additional tests. I just got mine uh, this week. I ordered about two weeks ago, so you can order, you know, the one of the things that, that the government did uh, for the cold and flu season and for, for, you know, the winter at the winter months to kind of prevent COVID or at least make sure that COVID's being less transmiss, trans, uh, transmissible um, is allowing people to order additional COVID tests, which will be delivered by the post office, by the U.S. Postal Service office. Um, to your home. So it makes it as easy as possible. You know, as far as getting vaccinated, you can go to secfreevax.org. And locally, the Mayview Health Center uh, at Columbia Neighborhood Center is giving away COVID boosters at their location every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. So if you know anyone who has not had a vaccination or, or um, hasn't had their booster, definitely they can go there um, um, and, and, um, get their, get their vaccination for free. So, um, okay. And let's see, is there any, um, if you have any questions, oh, actually, let me, let, let me up, announce some upcoming events first. You know, New Year's Eve is tomorrow, of course. So there are lots of restaurants that have specials, um, and then, you know, there are events around, you know, um, Sunnyvale, around the Bay Area, and it's like uh, Rooster Tea Feathers has a has a New Year's Eve event. Uh, lots, uh, lots of different places are having that. But if you're if you're going to be out partying, uh, please find a safe driver or use, of course, public transportation or a ride service. Um, if you're out partying, uh, Caltrain and the VTA will be having free rides that evening. You know, VTA is offering free rides from 8 p.m. New Year's Eve until 5 a.m. Um, on uh, New Year's Day. And then Caltrain provides free train rides uh, starting at 8 p.m. on Saturday. And that goes until 3.30 a.m. on Sunday with the last train leaving from San Francisco at 2 a.m. Um, as far as Next week is concerned. You know there will be the the tiebreaker election, the District Three uh, Council member election tiebreaker that'll be happening at ten thirty a.m. at City Hall at City Chambers, and you can, of course you can watch online too. And then as far as upcoming council meetings, um, Tuesday night, January third, uh, we'll be saying goodbye to our outgoing council members. You know, Council Member. Glenn Hendricks and uh, Gustav Larson, who both served nine years on council. And then, of course, council member Spitaleri, Tony Spitaleri, who was um, previously on council, but was appointed last year to fill the spot that was uh, em uh, empty after Mason Fong resigned from council a year ago. So uh, and then later that evening, we'll also be swearing in our new district council members, uh, Linda Sell from District 1, which is um, the South um, the southeast, or uh, sorry, the southwest portion of Sunnyvale. Um, whoever is chosen uh, that Tuesday morning um, in District 3, the south center uh, portion. And then, of course, District 5, Richard Mellinger, um, who um, is the area from the Caltrain tracks to 101, approximately. And then there'll be lots of speeches and certificates being passed out for, for the outgoing council members. We'll also, uh, you know, have a little little operational items from a city standpoint. We'll choose our new vice mayor uh, for a one-year term. Uh, we'll have um, council will actually choose its intergovernmental responsibilities. So all the different other positions that council has. And then of course, we'll, we'll um, be choosing our seating on the dais. And then the following Tuesday, January 10th, uh, cer the ceremonial swearing in of the vice mayor will happen. We'll, we'll honor the outgoing vice mayor, so uh, Vice Mayor Cisneros. And then we'll prove um, several things. We'll prove the, con the conceptual plan for the community center grounds renovation project. So that's at the community center. And ultimately that, you know, um, that is the end of a certain amount of outreach that's gone on to figure out, you know, how to 
uh, what people want there, ultimately kind of a reduced pond with picnic areas and kids areas and all that. So uh, we'll see what that final design is. We'll also be looking at the zoning amendment request regarding block 20. So that's the, the uh, site at the corner of Matilda and Olive and looking at adding additional residential units and office square footage. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, that's if you have any questions, um, please um, add them to the chat and hopefully I'll be able to see them. Not always. That's not always the case with Facebook, um, Facebook live posts. Um, but let me get to some questions that I previously received. You know, Margaret asked previously if District 3 ends up in a tie, then what happens? So uh, ultimately it did end up in a tie. Uh, the city clerk uh, ultimately will facilitate a public process to re resolve that tie by lot. Uh, both candidates will then be invited to participate in that process. And so generally that process is each uh, candidate uh, puts their name on a sheet of paper. It's put into matching envelopes. It's then put into a um, into a bag, um, shook up by each candidate, and then the city clerk ends up uh, pulling one of those envelopes out of the hat. So Richmond went through that process um, about a few weeks ago, uh, choosing their uh, one of their district council members from from a similar sort of tie. And so ultimately they'll be, um, you know, ultimately that will alt um, be what what happens on Tuesday morning. Uh, Jeff asks, why is it taking so long to schedule a tiebreaker for district one? So uh, in a, I've heard a few complaints about this. Uh, the city clerk couldn't do anything until we received the official certification of election, re election results from the Santa Clara County Register of Voters. And he didn't receive that until Tuesday. So ultimately, um, until he received that, you know, from a process standpoint, he couldn't, um, you know, and when, when it finally, because ultimately there were, there were lots of things happening last week that was finally declared. Um, and when he received it this week, then he could start setting up and doing the appropriate notification of that, of that, um, of the tiebreaker from a council standpoint or from a, from a district standpoint. So he, um, once he received that, he didn't receive that until Tuesday of this week. He issued the appropriate meeting declaration with the, with the corresponding, you know, general delays. Um, it's not an emergency meeting from that standpoint. Um, and so, and because city offices are closed, you know, today and Monday, it was actually scheduled for Tuesday morning because of the, of the New Year's Eve weekend. So um, we'll, we'll see that on Tuesday. Ying asked, why doesn't Sunnyvale have an ice rink this year? So the ice rink was was actually sponsored by um, and managed by City Line Sunnyvale. So the the developer who's managing the whole um, main block downtown where the old mall used to be, and because of construction, because of you know operations, they decided not to have it this year. They do want to bring it back next year, hopefully, uh, and I conceivably um, it'll be moved from that from that parking lot into Redwood Square. Kathleen asked, can the city sponsor a much larger ice rink set up in one of the huge city parks rather than a corporation's tiny ice rink profiteering setup? Uh, so it would be caught first, it would be a money thing from a city standpoint, set aside, setting aside money for that. Uh, the previous ice rink was downtown to get people to also come shop downtown. And the other half of that is, you know, there's where, where is there adequate parking for those people that want to go skating if we chose a random park? Definitely, you know, lots of our parks already have issues with parking um, and the concept of, of having a large attraction that brings, you know, lots of people to, to an ice rink and then having, you know, no place for them to park would conceivably not make it successful and cause lots of rippling issues in the neighborhoods around there. So, you know, once Redwood uh, Square opens next year, um, there will actually be a possibility for a larger ice rink than, than we had last year, according to City Line. Morgan asked, um, I'd like to know if the town is doing anything about the infestation of crows. We can eat, cannot eat downtown without fearing our meals will have bird droppings. So, you know, the city has restarted its use of the green lasers to harass the crows away from downtown. You know, council also approved increasing the spray washing of the sidewalks 
and the streets downtown at our last meeting in December. So ultimately, you know, we will, it, it'll be a little bit cleaner, um, but definitely there's parks, there are parks workers downtown that are, you know, using the green laser to, to harass the crows away uh, in the evenings right now. Um, Hoy asked previously, is the Sunnyvale's minimum wage the highest in the country or California? How is a small business managing that increase? So on Sunday, um, two days away, January 1st, uh, Sunnyvale's minimum wage will be going to $7, $17.95. Mountain Views will be going to $18.15. Palo Alto will be at $17.25 and Cupertino will be at $17.20. And this is, you know, all based upon an effort um, several years ago uh, to go faster than the state minimum wage increases. Uh, and I'm always shocked about cities that, that are just following the state minimum wage, um, especially in Santa Clara County, some of the, let's say, the, the more um, affluent cities, um, not just basically following what the state minimum wage is. So, you know, cities like Campbell, especially Los Gatos and Saratoga, still following the state minimum wage, which will be going from $15 to $15.50 on January 1st. Um, but for 2022, um, $17, it was minimum wage was $17.10 in Sunnyvale and Mountain View. Uh, but that wasn't the highest in Emeryville. It was 1767. In Seattle, it was 1727. In Palo Alto, it was 1645. Um, you know, and depending upon what ordinances they put in place about that minimum wage increase, we had uh, going up by CPI, the Consumer Price Index, with a 5% max every year. And so that's why all of a sudden Mountain View and Sunnyvale will differ. But, you know, from a federal standpoint, the minimum wage hasn't, has been $7.25 since 2009. And so ultimately, I think that, you know, that's one of the biggest things that needs to be affected. But, but you know, whenever I'm advocating with other cities, um, when other, whenever I'm advocating with other cities uh, in the area, it's also, um, it's, it's also important from my standpoint that, that, you know, I look at um, what, you know, what happens as far as trying to ask them to also deal with their minimum wage as far as that's concerned. Um, let's go ahead to any questions that I have. Um, let's see. Um, Garrick asks, it's hard to trust the numbers, and I believe many are self-testing at home and not reporting. Does Santa, Sunnyvale and Santa Clara County test wastewater? So yes, yeah, so so uh, the county does look at the num the COVID numbers and look at looking at wastewater as far as that's concerned. Um, and the numbers have ticked up, although they've kind of stabilized in the last week, as far as I've seen. Uh, definitely the 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 um, County Health is very focused on San Jose, Sunnyvale, Palo Alto's wastewater systems and trying to see what the what the COVIDs are. Yeah, definitely um, those numbers aren't fully reflective because people are testing at home, as we've talked about previously. But that being said, I do think that um, in general, we're not seeing as high rates, although, you know, we're not, we're seeing people being tested positive with COVID, but not as many hospitalizations as we might've seen in the past. Um, let's see. I, uh, Garrick commented, it's hard to trust the numbers and believe many of the, oh yeah, that's right. And that's what that is. Um, I think that's it for comments or at least all the comments that I can see, I keep opening them up and I don't see all the comments, obviously. I, problems, problems with, um, problems with Facebook. Anyway, um, so let me, let me go ahead and wrap up, you know, thanks for everybody. And if you, I didn't get to your question today, I'll go back and, um, uh, comment on it and bring it up next week. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for joining me again uh, during your holidays. You know, we are still in uncertain times and new issues continue to come up. But I want you to know that no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. You know, I'm proud of Sunnyvale and how our residents continue to respond, you know, over the last few years to any challenges. 
You know, I'm I'm thankful uh, to everyone who helps out in our community, showing their generosity, their kindness, your actions and your attitude really do make a difference. Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a happy new year. See you next year. See you next week. Goodbye.